obligated. See, a lot of people don't under. It really comes down to ignorance. Um, let me turn the music off. A lot of people don't realize. A lot of people don't realize that when you're in a traffic stop. You have a right to due process. And law enforcement likes to lie and say that due process starts when you're in the courtroom or after you're arrested. No, due process starts in the initial encounter. When the officer stops you, due process begins. And, and a lot of people don't even realize that. want to be more in the center of the screen. Um, I mean, when you get pulled over, it's really, I mean, they, they, they say they saw you doing something, and again, you can, like that, you can always front that in court. So, I'd rather let them go ahead and do what they're going to do, and then we'll just, I'll deal with them later, because I mean, they're not, they're not the judge, they're not, they're not going to determine what happens with this. If they give me a speeding ticket or a cell phone ticket, like I got a cell phone ticket recently, they give me a cell phone ticket. I always win those because if you got to the state got the burden of proof. They got to prove that I was on my cell phone. So yeah. I'll let you go ahead and give me the ticket. Give me the ticket. I go on with my business. And then in court, I'll just plead not guilty to it. And you got to show up and prove that I was on my cell phone. Do you have a, do you, do you have a fee schedule? Do you have a fee schedule that's public record? Do I know? I'm saying it's that simple. We're talking about traffic stops. You know what I mean? Right, we're, we're talking, talking about, about what you just said. So if you would have had a fee schedule that's public record, you can turn around and build them for your time that you spent in court. Got you. Because when you when you record your fee schedule, you put in every county on notice. You got that UCC, you got that fee schedule. And they're on notice. You just jump like three or four steps. I'm talking about the average person. Stop. Well, average You're person needs to be where. You're talking about fee schedules and UCCs. You have to break that down to the people because most people are unaware of what you're talking about when you're talking about UCC and when you're talking about fee schedules and stuff like that. But I was just talking basically if a regular person got pulled over the cop, they don't have the knowledge that you got. You know, lock the doors, crack the windows, hand them your license and registration and your insurance. Let them to give you the ticket. You don't got to say nothing to them. You don't got to get out the car. They need a warrant to search it. And they write whatever they write. You're going about your business. That's the way I was looking. But yeah, if, we, if we're if we talking to more, you're saying you can get, if a cop pulls you over, you have a fee schedule. You have that. Well, let's, well, you okay, yeah. we're jumping the gun. Money for the cop pulling you over. That's what you're saying. Yeah, right? we're jumping the gun a little bit. You're traveling, you get stops. The cop comes to your door. You're supposed to be recording immediately. You're supposed to have dash cams. I prefer the three channel dash cam. It records the front of your car. It records the inside of your car and the rear of your car. Now, if you're traveling properly and you're not being an idiot on the road, then there is absolutely no reason why the cop will pull you over. But if he does, because he's bored, you are under arrest. It's called a custodial arrest. Okay. Why the traffic stop you're saying? The, the traffic, traffic stop. stop it's called a custodial arrest? It's called a custodial arrest. You are not free to go. Now, if there is no cause of the traffic stop, that's called a show of authority stop. There is no traffic stop. Traffic pursuant to Title 42 USC 4902, Title 18 USC 31 is synonymous with transportation, which is synonymous with commerce. So traffic is synonymous with transportation. Transportation is synonymous with uh, commerce. 
So traffic, commerce, transportation is all in one. So you got to look in your state because that's where these road pirates reside in. And look at your the state uh, motor vehicle traffic law. And look at the definitions. And you will see what driver means. You will see what traffic means. And break it down. And legal ease, legal terms. You start seeing a lot of holes. I I know of New York. Okay? I deal with New Yorkers. I don't reside anywhere. But I'm currently located on the Republic of New York. And in New York state vehicle traffic law, the term driver means chauffeur. Chauffeur license. It has nothing to do with you traveling. So when you get stopped by law enforcement, you ask them, you invoke the Sixth Amendment. And the Sixth Amendment states that you have a right to know what you're being, uh, what you're being accused of. And you have a right to know who your accusers are. And this kind of bleeds through, you know, child protective services. When everything is anonymous, you have a right to confront your accusers. You have a right to invoke your sixth amendment at any time. So the traffic stop, why did you stop me? I'll tell you in a little bit. Right then and there, your due process has been violated. You have a right to know who you're speaking to. You have a right to know what you're being accused of, the particulars of the accusation, and who is confronting you. So you can confront them. Now within the Sixth yeah, Amendment. Kind of federal too, so you don't waste so you don't waste taxpayers' time and money. It's, you know, you get the opportunity to also settle that's why you, you have the opportunity to confront your your accuser. Your accuser. Because you could just settle the, the matter without wasting any of, of the resources. I was just about to state. talk about that. Because the Sixth Amendment is really, the Sixth and Seventh Amendment are like brother and sister. The Sixth Amendment is predicated more or less about criminal standard of law. If you are charged criminally, or you have been accused of a criminal crime, then you have a right to due process. You have a right to have. Uh, but if you know not, you know There's already somebody that's one. As I was saying. The Sixth Amendment is more or less of criminal standard of law. You have a right, if you don't know what you're doing, you have a right to have counsel of your choice. But you have a right, if you're being accused of something, to know what you're being accused of. Now, if it's civil standard, like I damaged your property civilly and I didn't really intend to commit a crime, any controversy over $20, you have a right to have a, a, a trial by jury. It's still due process. It's still under common law. And it states that in the Seventh Amendment. So, when a cop stops you, is it civil or criminal? Exactly. Who is the complaining witness? Now, the officer witnessed you commit a so-called violation. The lawful term of violation means injury to a person or breach of contract. This is what happens when you have a driver's license. You have a faulty contract. If you're the referee, you don't blow a whistle. There's no foul. So if you are ag agreeing, acquiescing to a contract that is a fraudulent contract, there's no foul. So you agree upon silence. It's called tacit agreement of these terms and conditions that you surrendered your Fourth Amendment in exchange of a privilege. Now we just reviewed of the Fourteenth Amendment that your rights turns into privileges. It literally says that black and white in the Fourteenth Amendment. I can't hear you, Quentin. When you were talking about the Fourth Amendment, but let me ask that. 
There's a horrible delay, bro. Uh, traffic offenses aren't, you're not breaking laws during traffic offenses anyways. They're codes, the penal codes and the statutes. So actually they're not, you're not even really breaking the law. You're just violating the code or you're violating uh, a statute. Um, and that's really where they, they, last night you brought up Admiralty Law and the Law of the Water. And that's where they're getting you with because you, they're getting you on that, that Law of the Water. I mean, as you said, Yes, as well, you know, we're a man. We're created by our, our, we made by our creator. And that's the law of the land. But most of the time when you're dealing with the, the police officer or the government, they definitely try to get you under that jurisdiction of the law of the water, like immediately. As soon as you know, you talked to me, when you gave me my advice about my shit me, and we were talking, and you told me I could pass the bar and all those other things. Those things, very true, because they literally try to get you under their jurisdiction, like immediately. But if you don't allow them to get you under the jurisdiction, you can maintain you can maintain a bit of your sovereignty. Even when you're getting pulled over in a traffic stop, it's the same scenario because only time a person is able to get jurisdiction over you is if you wrong another human being. If I go out and, and hit somebody and hurt somebody or then I wrong them, then they can have jurisdiction to have me arrested and, and Could you I got to wait for Josh to come back. We're getting real deep, too. Oh, my gosh. Dude, he needs to break down the law of the water, though, because I need him to break down. Cause he was talking about it yesterday with um, um, the birth, the uh, the, the ship. Because basically, basically, human beings, were like like a ship, all got female names, like boats. Because, you know, they all came on boats. Yeah. So the boats all got female names. And then when they dock, it's called a berth. And then they take an inventory of all the stock inside of the boat which is like products so within human beings we're like the same thing it's the law of the water because they got to govern the water if they run into any issues people got problems with one another it's law of the water this is the admiralty law so admiralty maritime law um and most of the time us as people are subjugated and we fall under this particular law Josh's attempt to free everyone from the matrix. Very difficult because it's complicated. Because of maritime admiralty law, you are all messed up. You're, you are a, you're undebilating. You are a item that's being in the stock market. You are beneath cattle. You're considered chattel. That's the thing. You. The product. This is the product, like like a carton of milk. Yeah. Yeah, consider a product. Because in 1933, they exchanged people. They exchanged their people as a commodity. Yes. I mean, but it would only make sense coming off a boat, correct? I mean, all boats got female names. When you dock the boat, it's the birth. Yep. And they get a count of all the inventory and they give it a number. Um, and that's pretty much the social security number that we have. So it's, it's pretty much a way of governing uh, the water. And most of the time when we're dealing with police officers and they're putting us under these codes and these statues, they're putting us under uh, the law of the water. And there was really something that was thinking, you had the Bible on earlier and it made me think about uh, Moses. And <clears throat> when Moses had went up and you know he had talked to God for a while and he came down and Aaron took everybody's gold and they melted it all down and they started worshiping the statue and it was almost as if people they they created their own state and they all started to to worship the state as if the state was the one that was was in control you know Moses wasn't having he, he stumped all of all of had it all melt, melted down stumped it all into the sand threw it in the water um but it kind of reminds me of that a very very similar thing it goes back that that far when we're dealing with law because then you know they say you're under a statue like you've been under like we worship statues like you're under a statue or you're under these codes and it's not even law it's just a code it's a statue that you violated and it'll say it on there you violate a statue blah 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 blah, blah and you'll have to it's like a code it's like or they're dealing with the shirt thing it wasn't even a law bro it was a code it was a statue and a code. I violated a code in the statue. I don't even, the bar is, and the crazy thing about it, the bar is who creates these codes and statues, and they're they're a civilian organization. So it's, it's a weird, it's very, very weird 
it's, it's a very weird paradigm that we're in, but I really love what you're doing. Like as far as uh, opening everybody's eyes and, and, and revealing to them the truth. And then in regards to traffic stop as well, are you under their jurisdiction because of the roads? When they pull you over, you know, how how does one, let's go back to it again, how does one deal with a traffic stop? If, if, if an individual's pulled over tomorrow, and let's say they were pulled over for, uh, let's say, getting in the, the POV lane. Do you guys got POV lanes there? No. Um, no. Like carpool lanes? Let, okay, forget carpool. Let's say cell phone ticket. Let's say a cop sees you on your cell phone and he pulls you over. You see the cherries in, your, in, your, in, uh, in the rear view. Do you stop? Do you keep going? What do you do? Walk us through this. Okay, so basically like this. You get pulled over, you're under custodial arrest. Due process has been applied. The application of six amendments implied a right. So you do, so let me ask, stop you here. If you decide not to pull over, it's better to just pull over than decide not to pull over, correct? Well, if you don't pull over now, you're fleeing. You're fleeing. You don't want to. Ren v. U.S. is they have a right to stop you. It could be an emergency. Um, your tail light could be on fire. Something could be on fire. You don't know. So it's better to pull over, pull over to the side of the road once you see the. Oh yeah, you, yeah. Okay. So then once once that happens, the cops gets out the car, he walks up to your door. What happens? What do you do? Your window should be about three fingers length down. Mm -hmm. Your door should be locked. You're already recording. Why? Tell 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 the people why your door should be locked. Because law enforcement has a tendency of opening your door and seizing <laughs> your car. They have a tendency. They will open your door. It's happened to me when I was a teenager. They will open your door. The Supreme Court has ruled that if you lock. open the door or lean in the window or break the plane of the door, that is a search. Yeah. They're going to bet. They're going to bet nine out of ten times you don't know the Constitution. Very well, yep. And it's weird because it's like in sales, you know, I sell my programs to people. So, you know, I did sales. Well, sales is something called assume the sale, right? You assume that you got the sale. And cops do that with, with assuming that they got authority. They be like, you might have researched the car and they'll start opening the door as if they're assuming that you're automatically going to do it, reading who the person is. If they read you as a person that's ignorant and don't know the law, because I just saw a friend of mine on Facebook from Carpenter get pulled over by the cops. He was just fishing. And the cops asked to search his car, and he said yes. He got out of the car and allowed them to search his car. They found nothing, but they were looking for guns and drugs, they said. And they wasted like an hour of his time. He went live on Facebook as they were just wasting his time. So the cops do, do have a tendency to assume, oh, you know, can I, uh, you mind if I search the car? And then they'll like, open the door if the door is unlocked. But go ahead and continue. If, so we lock the door to make sure the door is unlocked so the cops... Don't, uh, don't pull the door open. What else do you do after that? Once you know the door's locked. Now, you should have your phone on you. Now, again, you have your dash cam, three-channel dash cam. You've got your front, your inside, and the back. You simply say, what is the emergency? Now, I've heard cops say this to people several times, too. Cops say something along the lines of, you are not allowed to record me. Turn the camera off. What do you say if that if that's a cop says that? Go get your supervisor. Hmm. Why why do you tell him to get the supervisor? Because you just violated law. I mean, they have a right to lie to you, but it's going south right away. You're not allowed to record me. Go get your supervisor. So so uh, if the suit if they 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 say. They resist and you just insist, correct? And then if they go and get the supervisor, then, then what, what do you say to the supervisor? Now the scene has been escalated to the supervisor. You're only speaking to the supervisor and him alone. Right. The traffic stop by law should be no more than 20 minutes. So you have to give him a notice. Either get your supervisor or let me go. Get your supervisor. You wait till the supervisor comes up. Say, officer, why was I stopped? 
You're asking the questions. Now, what if they actually got the car and tell you you're not allowed to film them? They say, get out That's of the what car. They do. You're not allowed to turn the camera off and get out the car. That's prior okay. restraint. Now, we're going to Pennsylvania v. Mims argument that they have a right to tell you to step out the car, but there is two parameters, two prong tests that they have a lawful reason to have you step out the car. One, they suspect that you're carrying a weapon. They have to point to a specific area that they suspect that you're carrying a weapon. Then they can tell you to step out the car or the actual traffic stop area is dangerous. And for officer safety and your safety, they temporarily t tell you to step out the car because of the oncoming traffic or whatever the case may be. Those are the only reasons why they have a lawful right to tell you to step out the car. Now, if they tell you to step out the car because you're recording, that is called prior restraint. You say, no, I'm not going to step out the car. I need to record you. This is why I tell people, get a body cam. So you got your body cam on you, your phone, and your three cameras that's your dash cam. So if they tell you to step out the car, you have your body cam on you. If you have your phone, what they're going to do is take your phone and put it on top of the car. Whereas if you have a body cam, when you get stopped, you have your body cam, you put the body cam on, you turn it on, record your body cam. You don't need to wear your body cam when you go travel. Me, the way I am, I have my body cam in the council. I have my passport in the council. I have my three channels going in my phone. When, if I get pulled over, I'm recording. I, the first thing I do is grab my body cam because nine out of 10 times, they're gonna tell me to step out the car away from the cameras. You got your body cam, you're recording. I know this is crazy, but you have to police proof yourself. So they tell you to step out the car. Well, they said that it's been ruling that it doesn't matter if you're in the car or out the car. So now you're out the car. Then you tell them what they're gonna end up patting you down. You know what I mean? It's, t it's intimidation tactics. Because you have a motor vehicle. Let's move back a little bit. I'm going to come back to this for a second, but let's move backwards. Now, let's say they did not actually move out the car. They did not actually turn off your cell phone. We're back here. Okay, you weren't asked to get out to, to get out of your car. You weren't asked to get out of your cell phone. What happens after you said, I identify why you pulled them over? What happens next? Okay, so are they going to answer the question why? Yeah, let's say they answered the question. I saw you on your cell phone. And you know you were on your cell phone. Let's say you were texting somebody, you know you're in damn cell phone. And they, and they said, I saw you on your cell phone. Do you have evidence of that? That's what you're going to ask them? Yeah. And if they say yes or no? Which is What if it? they say no? What if they say no? If they say no, they, uh, they didn't record you or nothing. They say no, I just saw you on your cell phone. Okay. Am I free to go? That's what you're going to say to So if they say they recorded you on their camera, then what happened? Okay. Is that a crime? That's what you're asking? Yeah. What you're doing right, is you're trapping them. Just follow my lead. Is it a crime? Uh, let me, I guess I'll go with it. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you violating, you're not supposed to be on cell phones according to such and such, whatever code. Okay. I have a right to due process. I wish not to have joined her and I would like to be free to go. You're like, okay, can I get your, your uh, driver's license and your identification? No. So you're not, so you're not going to give them any of your identification? Like you're, you're I'm going to invoke, you ask them, are, could I have, could I be Mirandized? By them telling you you have a right to remain silent, anything you do or say would be used against you in a court of law, okay? If they don't want to tell you that, if they don't want to Mirandize, you Mirandize yourself. I have a right to remain silent. I know that anything I do or say will be used against me in a court of law. Is that correct, officer? Yes, but they're going to still ask for your, your driver's license and your, you're going to ask for your credentials, correct? I choose to invoke my Fifth and Fourth Amendment. So you're not going to give them any credentials? 
I choose to invoke my Fourth and Fifth Amendment. I'm not traveling in my commercial capacity at my at this time. I therefore I would like to be free to go. Will you use retaliatory action against me? You said, "Will you use retaliatory action against me?" Yes. The cops, are, the, the cops will have to say, "Well, the private let's, let's say they repeat themselves." I need to. I need you to. I need to see your driver's your driver's license, your insurance. And that's what they like to do: is a circular argument and take control. Sir, I heard you the first time. I shall comply. So what's what's their procedure for them if a person refuses to give them identification? What's the next step for them? Because I don't know. I've never refused. They're going to try to either threaten you or say if you don't provide, we're going to take you out of the car, handcuff you, blah blah blah. That's where you got them, because you could say under duress, I shall comply. Now your due process is violated. Because you have a right to remain silent, you have a right to speak an attorney, you have a right to whatever you do or say be used against you in a court of law, and you have a right not to incriminate yourself. By you handing over your pa your, your driver's license registration, you are incriminating yourself. They will use that information against you. So what you do is... But according, according to their, their statutes and their codes, there's a, those rules of the roads for them, so they... They have a particular procedure that they have to follow. Okay. Uh, if they, no, follow they swore an oath to the Constitution. No, they swore an oath to the Constitution, and you violated my due process under threat or coercion. Therefore, I shall comply, and any ticket that you give me is null and void because you forced a contract uh, without due process. Now you force so, a. So you take the ticket. So by refusing to give your information up is where, where, where I'm stuck at. You're refusing to give your information up. You're going to escalate this way more than you need to on a cell phone ticket. That's okay. You let them escalate it. On a cell phone ticket? Yeah. You got to choose your battle. Wait a minute. You You're not it. listening to me. I'm listening. Any I'm contract. I saw how far we just went just because you, were, you refused to give information. No, 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 no. Time out. It, stop. It's how far they went. They're the ones that stopped you, correct? Yes, because you're on a cell phone. Not against the law. But it is against the code. That is it a is, that is a is, company is policy. You got to understand. It is, policy. Right. It, it is a policy that they're enforcing under color of law, which is a violation of due process. That's what police officers do. They enforce policies. They're so supposed they to enforce the law. Policy. They're not policy enforcers. They're supposed. They swore an oath to uphold the Constitution. Marines do that. They're cops, man. If you swear an oath to uphold the Constitution, you—that is your duty to protect the Constitution. I don't care if you're sweeping a broom. So, they said if you don't hand over ID, we're going to arrest you. You win. You hand over the ID, you get the ticket, and I ordered a rubber stamp that says right to rescission. Pow, oh, right to rescission. Hand over the ID and get the ticket. Huh? Yeah. So you, well, I said, yeah, you said hand over the ID and you get the ticket. You get the ticket. Everything that happens thereafter, because... So, so, look, I was confused. I thought you said we're gonna, you refuse to hand over any ID. You're going to refuse, yeah. yes. Then they're going to threaten you. you. Eventually you comply. Yes. But you complied with a, stip uh, with a set of stipulations. Yes. You right. complied under force. That's so the key. They, run, they, they go back to their car. They run your information. Illegally. And they come back and hand you the ticket. Illegally. Well, you complied. You gave it to them. Under force. You hear what I said? At first, if you didn't do all that and you complied, you just created a joinder. You have agreed upon the stipulation because you just willfully handed over your driver's license and registration. But yep. because they forced you, now it's called Viet Armies. 
Now it's under. Now it's by force. They violated the Constitution. Now you can get them because of the Constitution violation. I understand. Because now they said, if you don't hand me over your documents, Fourth Amendment, then we're going to do this to you. Thank you. You just forced the contract. The contract is null and void. Free from the poisonous tree. If you obtain any information after illegal act, it's not admissible in court. You, they violate your due process. They could mail you the ticket, dude. They don't have to do all this on the side of the road. They could run your plates and say, hey, uh, everything comes up. I've got private plates. They can't run my plates. Yep. Honestly, traffic stops should stop nationwide. They should no longer do traffic stop by law enforcement. Stop doing traffic stops.